Hey guys, Dr. James Hoffman here from Renaissance Periodization with Juggernaut Training Systems. Again, we are here today to talk about hypertrophy training and particularly doing hypertrophy training in combination with other sports and activities. So what do we know about hypertrophy training in general? Well, we know that for any of the muscles that we're trying to train, we're generally gonna be training them from the MEV all the way potentially through the MRV. And for things that we're maybe not training or not prioritizing as much, we might just put those down on maintenance volume or maybe minimum effective volumes. But because we train a lot of muscles, one of the problems that we have to juggle is systemic overreaching. Why? Because if you're training your chest, your legs, your arms, your back, right? It's just a lot of muscle mass and we get a lot of spillover. So systemic overreaching is something that we have to manage as a part of hypertrophy training. And we usually want to have our mesocycles lasting about as long as we can. We want nice long stretches of four, five, maybe even upwards of six weeks at a time before having to take deloads so that we're spending most of our time getting jacked and not having to spend a huge chunk of the year doing fatigue management stuff. So we want to be training hard and for as long as possible as much as we can. Now, if we look at hypertrophy training and other sport combinations, we kind of see some challenges start to arise. First of all, in other sports, when you have to compete, you might not actually have a ton of time to be in a good body composition for your sport, especially for those that have weight classes. So instead of spending six months doing body composition change, you might only have one or three months to get into really good shape for your sport. So that's a huge difference right off the bat. We might not be able to spend a lot of time doing body composition stuff. Next, we often see that the hypertrophy training that we do can often exceed the MRV for different fitness characteristics. For example, if you're somebody who needs to be explosive or fast, the amount of training that you need to do to get more jacked can actually impede your ability to express things like power and speed. Thus, they directly conflict. If you're doing hypertrophy training and trying to do power and speed or maybe agility training at the same time, you often cannot express some of those fitness characteristics to their fullest extent, therefore overload them to get better at them. Ugh, that's a big problem, right? We also know that especially systemic overreaching, which is common in hypertrophy training, can definitely interfere with your ability to learn new skills, like new techniques for your sport, and can definitely interfere with your ability to learn things like tactics. So we have kind of a one-two punch there. You might not be able to learn or express some of the techniques you have for your sports, and you might not be able to integrate them as well in a tactical environment, meaning integrating those skills in a sports setting. So that's another huge difference. We also have some specificity of training differences with hypertrophy training and sport training, right? We know that in hypertrophy training, we're really just trying to be as big and as lean as possible, right? But in sport training, we usually have some muscles that are more important than others, right? We might have some sports where the legs are really, really important and the upper body, not so much and vice versa. So our priorities in terms of which muscle groups we're training might be distinctly different in our sporting endeavors, in our hypertrophy endeavors. We also know that in hypertrophy training, we're doing a lot of what we like to call muscle training, meaning we're really trying to get as much out of the training for whatever muscle group that we're training, as opposed to trying to get really good at a movement, like a bench press, for example, right? So in hypertrophy training, we're trying to do things that really work the chest. In something like powerlifting, we're trying to put up the biggest numbers we can on a movement, such as a bench press. And that is a distinct difference, right? And then lastly, in our specificity differences, we see some really, really big differences in force and velocity characteristics of training. In most sports, we have to either be able to be fast or explosive, whereas in hypertrophy training, that's really not much of a consideration at all. And we might actually use rep ranges that are distinctly different than things that we might see in sport. So we can see there's some definite differences in just trying to get jacked versus trying to be a jacked person who's also doing other sports. So let's take a look at some examples where we can see some kind of common differences in how to address them. First thing we'll look at is if you are somebody who likes to do hypertrophy training, but you also like to do pure strength and power sports. This could include something like powerlifting, weightlifting, maybe even strongman is a good example. So usually in these cases, we're gonna use our hypertrophy training to maximize our body compositional goals for those sports. Meaning we don't wanna be like super over fat for whatever weight classes that we're in, nor do we want to be under muscled. So we're gonna use our hypertrophy training throughout the year to really help us kind of get into that optimal weight class in addition to whatever just aesthetic goals that you have for yourself, right? So in this case, we're gonna use that time to get either uh, to maintain the muscle that we have and get to the lower weight class if we're 
or over fat, or we're going to be spending time trying to build as much muscle as we can at that weight class so we can be really, really strong, right? We also know that that hypertrophy training, which builds muscle, is really great for these sports because it can potentiate gains in strength and power down the road. But, and this is a big but, and we like big butts and we can't lie, the problem with that type of training is that it will mask your ability to express things like maximum strength and power, right? So if you are trying to be the be uh, put up a really big PR on your weightlifting stuff, like your snatch and your clean and jerk, if you're doing hypertrophy squats during that time, your ability to express power output is going to be greatly diminished. So the likeliness of you hitting a PR on those things is very low, right? Whereas if we just take that out and actually just focus on strength and power training, that PR is very likely going to come down the road. So kind of the quick and dirty thing is hypertrophy training, gaining muscle, helps you get stronger, more powerful, but in the short term can blunt your ability to express some of those fitness characteristics. So we have to be strategic in how we use it, right? Another thing that we have to be wary of if we're doing hypertrophy training and something like weightlifting or powerlifting is maintaining our competition technique. It's very easy to get away from those things when we're pursuing just being as jacked as possible, right? Especially in something like weightlifting, where if we're really just trying to be buff, how much time are we gonna be spending doing snatches and clean and jerks? Maybe not a ton. So if you're a multi-sport athlete in that sense, you have to make sure that you keep some maintenance volumes of your competition style techniques. And in powerlifting, that might be just staying rudimentally familiar with that low bar squat position, whatever pulling style that you like to have, whether it's conventional or sumo, or whatever your uh, actual competition style bench press grip is gonna be. You wanna just keep some maintenance volume of that in the loop and never get too far out of, out of that because it's just gonna take a lot of time and momentum to get back into a good groove on that. So technique maintenance is really, really important. For most of these types of sports, we want to end our hypertrophy phase so that we have about two, maybe even upwards of three strength cycles and a peaking phase before any major competitions. So what that means is if we're doing body compositional change and hypertrophy stuff, we want that to stop so that we can do at least two strength mesos and a peaking meso before any really, really big, important competition for us. Now, if you have other competitions that you wanna do, but they're not super important, maybe it's a gym meet, maybe it's just something for fun, right? You can train through those things and that's absolutely fine. You can just do something like a deload going into that weekend or even a few light days and that's not a big deal. You won't have your best performance. You probably won't hit some PRs, but you'll still maintain your competition schedule, your competition experience and all that stuff. And that's great, right? But for anything that's really important to you where you wanna place well, you probably wanna end hypertrophy training specifically with about two mesos of strength and a peaking meso in mind. How long those are will depend on your training age and things like that, but that's generally a good guideline to stop your hypertrophy training. And then once that competition is over, it's up to you. You can go back to just trying to be jacked, or if you have more competitions in mind, you can keep that competition schedule going, right? The key here is to just take care with your scheduling. Don't be willy-nilly about scheduling competitions all over the time. You basically probably want to set a nice competition schedule for yourself, meaning it might be good to have somewhat of a season, right, where you might have kind of four months, five months throughout the year where you're really focused on weightlifting, powerlifting, and strongman. And then the rest of the time, you can focus on changing your body composition to be as jacked or as lean as you want, right? This way, you're never going to have too much interference between the two training modalities and you can really get some good momentum just doing one thing at a time, really emphasizing either the hypertrophy training, getting lots of momentum with that, or the strength and power training needed for those sports. So it's probably in your best interest to have somewhat of a season for both, where you have numerous competitions that you're getting ready for, and then the rest of the year where you're just trying to focus on being buff, right? What about other sports? So we talked about powerlifting, weightlifting, something like that. What if we look at more of our traditional sports, like our team sports, even things like combat sports, something like that? One of the things that we notice right off the bat is if you're trying to do both of those things, time is of the essence. Why is that? Well, most of these types of sports have kind of a routine competition schedule, meaning uh, they just kind of keep going throughout the year all the time. Some sports might have an indoor and outdoor season. Some sports just kind of restart every four months or so, right? So you may not have a ton of time to actually get as muscled as you want or as lean as you want for competition. So you might have to come in fast and furious with your hypertrophy training. Generally, we recommend doing that hypertrophy training during the general preparatory periods of whatever your sporting season is. Now, if you only have a short time that you're preparing for sport, like maybe you have an MMA fight or something, and maybe you only fight once a year, then you can pepper in hypertrophy training all over the place, wherever you want. But for sports where time is a little bit more constricted, 
we usually are gonna put in our hypertrophy training in that general preparatory phase, right? And that makes it really, really easy to schedule. When we have other sports that we're managing, typically our hypertrophy training may not actually span all the way up to our MRV values. Why is that? Well, we aren't gonna, we're not gonna be pushing any one body part or our systemic fatigue to its absolute limit because it's gonna be interfering with so many other things. The problem that we run into with other sports is you're gonna to have to be managing different fitness characteristics, right? Probably something like some component of endurance, uh, strength, power, speed, agility, change of direction. You're gonna have your sport skills, your sport tactics, and the time spent practicing those things. So now we're juggling a whole bunch more things. We really can't take any particular muscle group all the way to its kind of penultimate limit because it's gonna start interfering with your ability to do all of those other things. So more likely the hypertrophy training we do at these times might be something more like MEV, MAV values rather than spanning that entire gap all the way up to MRV only because that's probably gonna be pushing us out of other things that we wanna do, right? You can kind of think of training in this case like a graphic equalizer. Like if you ever listen to music or you look at your computer and has all the little dials for all the different frequencies of sound, that's how we can think of training in team sports settings, right? You have some amount of tactics, some amount of technique, you have some amount of fitness, and you're kind of juggling all these things, dialing them up and down. When we're doing hypertrophy training in traditional and team sports, what we're essentially doing is moving that weight training dial way up so we can do more training, get more muscle mass, which is cool. But we can't just move everything up. If we move those dials up, some of the other dials have to come down. And which dials you choose is up to you based on your needs analysis, right? But ultimately that means if you're gonna be spending more time in the weight room, that probably means you're gonna be doing less conditioning, less sports, less tactics, things along those lines. So I like to think of it as a graphic EQ, kind of a silly analogy, but applicable here. One other thing to keep in mind in these sports, because there's usually some type of cardiovascular component, systemic overreaching can sneak up on you during these periods. If you are running around doing your team sports stuff and doing all this really hard hypertrophy training, one of the limiting factors will likely not be the muscles that you're actually trying to grow, but actually your systemic fatigue because of that cardio component. So just be careful, it can sneak up on you. You might have to think about it a little bit more. And then whenever we have any kind of tactics, techniques, speed power training stuff, we always wanna make sure we're practicing those in our low fatigue conditions, right? If you are trying to get better at any of these things, you will not be getting better at them when you are wiped out from doing that really, really hard hypertrophy training. So if you ever are trying to maintain your sprint technique, trying to learn a new pass in rugby or something like that, always make sure that at that time, if you're working on those things, do it under as low fatigue conditions as you can so that the fatigue from hypertrophy training doesn't interfere with your ability to make progress in other parts of your sport, right? Similar guidelines here, usually we want our hypertrophy and body comp stuff to end in that we have about two mesocycles or more of specific sport preparatory training to do before any major competition. So what that means is once we start moving into our really, really hard sport training, we want to get at least two solid mesocycles of that sport training in before any major uh, competitions come up. And what that also means is body composition changes will essentially stop at that time. So once we hit that specific preparatory period, we're really gonna stop doing a lot of hypertrophy training and move into our sport specific training, which will probably be like strength, power, uh, endurance, intermittent endurance, all of those things. So we wanna give ourselves some time. And the way that we do that best is usually by leaving about two mesocycles before any major competitions. Probably a little bit more would be better, but at least two is a good cutoff point for hypertrophy. All right, so now we've talked about a couple good examples. What about something a little weirder, like if you wanna do hypertrophy and endurance training? Well, you can do it, it gets a little bit more complicated. We know that hypertrophy and endurance are not mutually exclusive things. That doesn't mean you can't do both, but they do tend to butt heads a little bit, so we just have to manage it a little bit better. It's probably a good idea, again, to have a season where you're focusing on one versus the other. The cool thing about managing these two things is that the maintenance volume for muscle mass or cardiovascular fitness are abysmally low. People often think that you have to be running all the time to maintain your cardiovascular fitness. Not true, same thing goes with weight training. You don't have to do a lot of weight training to not lose muscle. So the cool thing here is you can kind of pick one and focus on it and keep a very low maintenance volume of the other and never really decondition on it, which is pretty cool, right? So what we find is that it's easy to maintain 
But unfortunately, to make progress in either of those, it requires a bit of time and momentum. You have to kind of slowly keep ramping up the difficulty in terms of volume and intensity over time. So that gives us credence to use kind of a seasonal approach where you might spend six months actually doing hypertrophy training just so you have enough time to accrue enough volume and intensity to get good hypertrophy training. And same thing goes for endurance training. And then we can have kind of a season where we make trade-offs, right? A couple things that are of note. Oftentimes, uh, if you're just doing uh, running and hypertrophy training, that can be pretty easy to manage just because really all you're having to manage is the legs. But if you're doing something like running, cycling, swimming, like triathlon st type stuff, it can get a little bit more complicated and you might have to play around with your training a little bit more to consolidate those stressors. But one of the things that we like to do is consolidate some of the training stressors to the same days as we can. What that means is if you have a leg training day and you still have to hit your maintenance leg volume, it might actually be a, a good idea to do your hypertrophy training in the morning and then actually take your maintenance run in the evening so that you actually have true recovery days for the legs. A common mistake we see with people who do hypertrophy training and endurance training is they try to alternate and what ends up happening is they just blow out their legs all the time because they never truly get a rest day. The trouble with this method is whichever one you do first is gonna be good whichever one you do later is gonna be less good. So it's a trade-off, right? So we have priorities. If we have our hypertrophy season, we might lift in the morning, maybe do a run in the evening and vice versa. If we have our endurance season, we might run in the morning and do our maintenance volume of lifting in the evening, something like that. It's always gonna be a trade-off. There's no way around it, but it's a good way to make sure we're not always training the legs all the time, right? When we're doing our maintenance uh, weight training stuff, it's not a bad idea to choose exercises without a ton of axial loading, and we wanna uh, try and minimize the amount of systemic fatigue that we're generating, so that might be a good time to use things like your leg presses, your hack squats, rather than just doing deadlifts and uh, high bar squats all the time. Might be a really good idea. And again, you wanna give yourself some time. Both of these things require some time to build up enough capacity to train them hard. So a common mistake people will make is they'll say, oh, I have my weight training season, basically my hypertrophy season and my endurance season. When I transition, I'm just gonna go right up to my MRV from what I was doing before. No, unfortunately that doesn't work very well. What you're gonna to need to do when you transition from one emphasis to the other is spend several weeks ramping up the volume and intensity because you will not have the capacity and tolerance that you did at the end of the last time you made that emphasis. So don't jump into it gung-ho. The first few weeks is gonna be you building up your local and systemic work capacity to that new emphasis of training, whether it's endurance or hypertrophy, but you cannot just jump in guns blazing. You're gonna to have to take some time and build up your capacity and then really generate some momentum over time. So here's just some kind of quick tips, right? If you are balancing hypertrophy training and other sports, just keep in mind, time, effort, and your recovery ability are finite resources. You cannot just do everything all the time and expect that you're not gonna break down. So what we usually recommend is, it's often better to make some tangible progress in maybe one or two things, rather than trying to make immeasurable progress on everything at the same time. So there's this idea of priorities, right? You don't have a lot of time, you don't have a lot of effort, it's probably in your best interest to maintain some things and go after some other ones really aggressively so you can make progress, instead of trying to do everything at the same time and just spinning your wheels and never actually getting any better. Hypertrophy training is awesome. It makes you jacked, it makes you look good and Instagram worthy. You can do it all the time throughout the year. There is just some trade-offs that we have to be aware of. And one of the things is, is that it often will compromise sport performance. So it's generally a good idea to differentiate those things and have clear delineated priorities throughout the year when you're training. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have more questions along these lines, you can find us at RP Plus, where Mike Isretel and I answer questions every week. And similar topics are covered in our book, Integrated Periodization for Sport Training. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys soon.